Hi, I'm Charmaine James, and I'm talking with Dr. Lewis about when your horse colics and what some good advice what to do with them when that happens. Well, colic, uh, you know, is a serious thing in a horse. You should always view it seriously if they show those symptoms. And it, unfortunately, it's still the number one killer of horses today. People ask me why horses do that all the time and why it's so common in them. And I used to tell people I think the Lord invented them to keep veterinarians up all night. So their intestinal tract. If you actually looked at it, you wonder how anything ever got through it. But it's the way they're made. Uh, but seriously, uh, horses, and I have a lot of sympathy for people that are hauling horses. Uh, in, a, in a rodeo, the rodeo circuit is probably as tough on them as any. Because, I mean, they're in and out of trailers constantly going all around the country. Well, you know, it. It's, it's hard on a horse. Uh, it's, it's upsetting their routine. They don't eat at regular times. Uh, sometimes people are having to pick feed up along the way. Uh, there's a variety of things that contribute to colic that I've observed over the years, and, and, and one of the big ones is change of feed. Uh, I think that's a, a, a common denominator. Another thing, the rodeo season really picks up in the summertime in hot weather. And these horses are hauling and competing in really, really hot weather. And I think that's where you have to be extra cautious and extra observant about your horse. Some of them don't drink as well as they should. Uh, they uh, don't, don't get enough electrolytes in them. Uh, and they don't eat as well as they should. And so another thing, horses, you know, sometimes you, you, the people pull in an event, they go in a stall. Horses need to get exercise. So if nothing else, you get them out and ride them around a little bit or walk them or something. Get them out and get them out of those trailers. And Everybody could use a little walking after sitting in the truck all day. <laughs> there you go, and a horse does too. And so they need all of that. But be that as you may, do everything you can do and you still get a horse to start showing signs of bellyache, not eating, pawing, looking at your side, laying down, that type thing. Be suspicious of what you should do. Uh, I think it's always good to get a horse out and walk them some. If they're uncomfortable, and they're wanting to lay down, do those kind of things. Sometimes you have to do something to blunt the abdominal pain, give them a little time and walk them. Probably the most common thing people give today is banamine. Uh, everybody carries that. It's a, it's a good analgesic, it's an anti-inflammatory. Uh, some horses don't respond to that and they may need a sedative. Uh, good old uh, rompin or xylazine is a tried and true old drug that's good for that. I always liked it because it doesn't last that long. Uh, it'll sedate a horse for a while. And chances are if a horse has got a spasmodic colic or a gas colic and you walk them a little bit, they may start getting over it as soon as they got it. And all they need is a little sedative to get them by. But if things start going along very long, start thinking about calling somebody. and. Uh, how long do you think, because I know I've probably had a few over the years that got belly achy that got over it really fast. At what point should you be, you know, I mean, I'm sure the, you know, amount of pain that horse is in, the symptoms obviously will dictate that a little bit, yeah. but. Yeah, it, you're right, it's degrees if it's mild. Uh, and I mentioned romping. Uh, a lot of people carry didomidine with them or demosedan. That's a suitable drug. The point is that both of those are fairly short duration drugs. You know, my thumb rule is if you have to give a dose of that to a horse to calm them down for a while, 30 or 45 minutes, that's going to start wearing off. And if that horse is starting to show some, still showing symptoms and that's wearing off, you should call somebody. Don't mess around with that one. <clears throat> Banamine is effective in some horses. The thing you have to be a little more careful with it because you get longer acting relief and plus it tends to mask some clinical signs that can develop in a horse that tip you off you have something wrong and yet they Banamine can cover those up for an extended period of time. So you have to be a little careful about that. Uh, Banamine actually may have an impact on a horse for three to four to six hours. See, so. If you use Banamine and the horse seems to recover, that's good. You just need to keep him back in your mind. Better come back and keep checking on that horse. That's what I'm kind of getting at. If you have a horse though, and as I mentioned, 30, 45 minutes, an hour later, you don't think the horse is any better uh, or maybe getting worse, you should call somebody. 
because worst case scenario, some things can happen in a horse's abdomen that can be life-threatening fairly rapidly, and you don't want to get behind the eight ball on that because depending on where you are, if you realize you got, boy, I got something really wrong, now you got to find out where you're going to go with that horse because you may be able to get a veterinarian locally, for instance, to help you treat that horse. Uh, for instance, uh, in, as I mentioned, in the hot summer, they'll dehydrate pretty quickly. Those horses will need fluids. Uh, they'll have something that's potent enough to manage pain, but then what if it's a surgical abdomen or a, an intense medical case that needs to be in hospital somewhere? Depending on where you are, it may be three, four, five, six hours away. So you don't want to mess around too long, in other words, before you start making arrangements to get your horse where it needs to be. Uh, that's uh, the farther out west you go, the distances are greater. So, uh, right. and you know that as well as anybody. But right. even even here in Texas, I can remember when I started in practice here, I had horses that came eight and ten hours here, and that's a long way to go with a really bad colic. So, you don't want to get yourself behind that eight ball, so to speak. Try to think of think about where you need to be going. Uh, and give yourself some time. So the question you ask, how long do I wait? Some of that has to depend on where I am and, and how bad you think the horse is. If you're worried about them, be thinking about getting them on the road somewhere. So.